Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I should thank the organizers for uh, inviting me uh, to uh, present our work uh, in this wonderful uh, conference. I've been learning a lot. Uh, so the story I'm going to tell you today is done together with this gentleman. Uh, I want to uh, particularly uh, highlight my student, Roshan Ma at Perimeter. So most of the, uh, the story uh, I'm talking about today, uh, you can find more detail in this paper we wrote last September. And uh, there is a follow-up uh, work that uh, significantly expands the scope. And I'll touch upon some of them uh, done with um, Jian Hao Zhang and uh, Jen Bi from Penn State and uh, Meng Chen from Yale. Uh, here I boldly prophesy that the paper can come out this month, hopefully. Um, all right, so, uh, so the, the, the motivation is, is something very simple. So uh, very often when we talk about topological phases, you know, pick your favorite TI or something, uh, you, we want to keep some symmetries, right? that, that, that's important. For example, time reversal symmetry is important for TI. Uh, but it is very often the case that the symmetry we, uh, we love uh, is actually broken by some uh, disorders. Um, but they may well be there if you average over your disorder ensemble. Uh, this kind of thing happens everywhere. For example, whenever you talk about a crystalline topological phase that's protected or enriched by some crystalline symmetry, well, you never have a perfect crystal in a real lab. So, uh, so anytime you have a real crystal, uh, things like translation symmetry, rotation, reflection, uh, they, are, they are true at most uh, at, at some average level. Right? You will always have some impurity, some random potential turned on. And there are many other uh, cases of that sort. For example, if you can uh, have a topological insulator, but you, then you can put in some magnetic impurity. Uh, so the question I want to uh, ask today it's a very simple one. So are, are, are the topological phases right, we know and love, are they well-defined for such uh, average symmetries? And if they are, what do they look like? How, how, do, we, how do we think of them in general? Uh, so, so this is a brief summary of basically the results I'm going to tell you. Um, so the take home, um, well, first of all, uh, that uh, topological phases are indeed well-defined, even with uh, this uh, average symmetries. Uh, but the story is uh, different from the standard clean, uh, SP, uh, clean topological uh, story. Um, so first of all, some of the non-trivial phases in the clean limit, actually, they do become trivial once you introduce disorder and break some of the symmetries down to uh, only true on average. That's probably not super surprising. The slightly more uh, interesting case is when some of the clean non-trivial topological phase actually do remain non-trivial, even if you introduce some symmetry breaking disorder um, and have only average symmetry. Uh, the even more amusing situation is when, uh, is when we realize that some non-trivial topological phases only exist if your system is dirty, uh, if, you, if, you, if your sample is not that good. Um, so we call them, uh, so they are in some sense intrinsically disordered. So this, this will be topological phases that make no sense in clean system. Um, the other thing I want to say is that, I uh, want to tell you is that uh, uh, just like you us the usual story, if you have a non-trivial uh, bulk to uh, topological phase, then indeed it is true that your boundary state has to be non-trivial in, in some way. So this is actually uh, a nice uh, thing about this is that it generalizes the notion of uh, quantum anomaly, which is the most robust characterization of uh, boundary states uh, to uh, average symmetries, the disorder system. Uh, and I should say that um, this kind of problem, uh, we're definitely not the first to consider this kind of problem. In fact, uh, a decade ago, uh, this kind of question has been uh, asked in the context of free fermion uh, topological insulators. There are a uh, set of works, uh, uh, but previous examples mostly, uh, mostly were case by case, uh, and it, was, uh, it wasn't clear uh, how to go beyond free fermion paradigm. So for this uh, talk, I'll tell you a general picture that also works uh, even with uh, strong interactions. So I'll be focusing on the simplest kind of uh, topological phases. Uh, they are known as uh, symmetry protected topological phases or SPT. Uh, and the reason to study them, well, first, 
they are interesting on their own. Second, they are reasonably simple, that there is hope to actually understand them uh, in finite time. Um, uh, and the third is uh, the, the, the history from past decade taught us that if we really understand those simple topological phases well, uh, you can also improve your understanding of much more complicated uh, states of matter. Okay, so let me remind you uh, the definition of uh, SPD uh, in the usual setting. So think about a local Hamiltonian uh, and uh, such that the ground state is gapped and unique. And uh, if you measure correlation functions in your ground state, you only see exponentially decaying uh, correlation functions. Uh, and uh, the, the modern jargon to uh, summarize this property is to say that the ground state is quote, quote short range entangled. Uh, the idea is that you can take your ground state and adiabatically transform that into something completely boring, into, uh, let's say an atomic insulator where your, your wave function is literally just a product state of uh, local, uh, local orbits. Uh, but if you have a non-trivial SPT, then such an adiabatic deformation must at some point break your symmetry. So this is true, for example, for the uh, famous topological insulator. So it, 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 it can be deformed into some trivial atomic insulator if and only if uh, you break, for example, time reversal symmetry. Uh, and uh, you don't have to uh, uh, stick with uh, free fermion uh, within this definition. Uh, in fact, the first known example in history uh, of uh, SPT state is the spin one, uh, spin one Haldane chain. Um, and that's pretty strongly interacting, uh, but it actually satisfies this criteria. And uh, uh, one thing particularly interesting about this kind of state is that even though the, the bulk look uh, you know, relatively featureless, almost by, by design. Uh, but if you have an open, uh, uh, if you have a boundary, the system has a boundary, then the boundary state is guaranteed to be non-trivial in some sort. Right? Uh, the most typical uh, behavior you see is some uh, protected gapless boundary state, for example, for the TI, uh, uh, the, the, the surface state, or the holding chain that holds dangling uh, spin one half moment at the, uh, at the end. And the modern way to uh, characterize the non-triviality of such boundary state is through the notion of uh, quantum anomaly or two hooped anomaly. Okay, so now let me uh, try to uh, define a little bit more carefully what I mean by uh, SPT now for average symmetries. Um, so instead of thinking, uh, thinking about a single Hamiltonian and a single ground state, so let me think about an ensemble, uh, a, 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 a random ensemble of local Hamiltonians, uh, without loss, uh, loss of generality, you can think of the Hamiltonian as coming from a clean piece and some disordered part. Uh, you have some uh, uh, disordered potential that couples to some local operator. So I here means your um, lattice, uh, lattice point. Uh, so I'm, I want to make uh, several requirements, just like usually when we when we consider a topological phase, you want your Hamiltonian to be local, you want your ground state to be gapped with nice properties so you can make controlled statements. So here we want to do, do something like that. Uh, for example, I want, I want my uh, disorder um, uh, field to be short range correlated. Uh, at least, at most, they decay with some uh, uh, exponential. Um, they, they should decay exponentially fast uh, just to, to, to be able to make a controlled statement. And, uh, uh, and now I can, I can think about symmetries, but unlike a single Hamiltonian, if you have a single Hamiltonian, you want to think about symmetry, the definition is trivial. It, it, it's some, some operator that commutes with your Hamiltonian. Uh, but now you are facing, with, uh, facing a, a random ensemble. There are two notions of symmetry uh, we can potentially con uh, consider. Uh, so the first notion, let me call it exact symmetry. So let me call the symmetry K. Um, so it's, it's something that commutes with the Hamiltonian for any disorder realization. So, so you take any realization in your ensemble, that exact symmetry K is a good symmetry. Your, your, your ground state is an eigenstate. Uh, but then there's another notion, uh, which is average symmetry. It means that uh, this, uh, this disorder part uh, actually breaks that symmetry. So in other words, this uh, random potential V uh, transforms non-trivially under, uh, un uh, under this symmetry. For example, if I take my TI and put in some some random magnets uh, uh, in, um, then under time reversal transform that if I turn on a random field, 
that field goes to minus itself. But this uh, this uh, random potential comes, you know, it's, it's, it's drawn out of a classical probability distribution function, right? So, uh, so it, it can happen that uh, this, this potential transforms non-trivially under G, but the, but the actual probability distribution of the potential is invariant, right? Again, take the random magnetic field example, it can totally be that uh, your random magnetic field has equal probability of being up and down. So on average, you do have that time reversal uh, symmetry. And, uh, uh, and then uh, I want to think about a symmetric ensemble where the, the, the uh, you know, all this uh, symmetry, the, the, the exact and average symmetry are not spontaneously broken. Okay. So that's the analog of the usual, you know, unique uh, ground state that's symmetric. Uh, okay, uh, so, now, so now I can, I can, I can define what I mean by uh, average SPT or you know, this kind of simplest topological state. Uh, again, instead of thinking about a single ground state, I'm now facing a, a random ensemble of ground state. Um, in the clean case, as I uh, told you, that uh, I want to consider the simplest kind of ground state where uh, it is short range correlated with a finite correlation length. So here I make a very similar state, uh, requirement. I require that uh, this psi, so I is labels disorder realization. There, there are many different um, such states drawn from my ensemble. So I want each of my uh, ground state psi to be short range entangled, meaning it has roughly means that it has a finite correlation length. Uh, I make the slightly stronger uh, statement that this correlation length should be upper bounded in my ensemble. So if I go from one realization to the other, the correlation length doesn't grow uh, indefinitely. So that it's, it's not a, it's not a uh, uh, stringent, uh, very stringent uh, requirement. So upper bounded correlation length. Um, and once you make that uh, condition, you can now start thinking about uh, the kind of uh, deformation you're allowed on your, on your system. So the, the reason uh, why a lot of us like topological phase is that you can, you can, you can, you can start from your Hamiltonian with a topologically non-trivial ground state, and then you can deform your Hamiltonian a little bit, change your terms a little bit, and nothing, nothing really changes. Uh, the, the interesting properties remain. So, um, so here, the only difference is, not, is that uh, you can now not only deform your Hamiltonian, you can also deform the probability distribution of your random field. So that seems, uh, it seems reasonable that this is some allowed deformation. Uh, as long as this deformation do not lead to uh, any violation of the conditions I listed. I want, I want my ensemble still, to still preserve the symmetry, and I want uh, this, uh, my, 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 my entire uh, ensemble of ground states to be still short range entangled, in the sense that it has a uh, upper bounded correlation length. Okay. So, 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 so that's the rule of game. Yeah, yes, so uh, that, that's, how, that's how I hide it. So the, the better statement is that if I try to make this state out of a uh, trivial product state using a finite depth circuit, uh, the correlation length is the depth of that circuit. Yeah, uh, in that definition, a toric code will have infinite C. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so, so once, I, once, I, once I have those notions ready, then the, uh, the notion of average SPT uh, or the, the average uh, SPT phases are essentially equivalence classes under this definite, uh, under uh, these deformations. So essentially two ensembles will be considered to belong to the same phase if I can deform one to the other by deforming my Hamiltonian and this uh, 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 random distributions while preserving all the symmetry and finite correlation length uh, condition. So, so, so it, it's really just some minimal generalization of the good old notion of topological insulator uh, to disorder and interacting system. So before moving on, uh, let me make a brief digression. So that this notion of, uh, so, 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 so the previous definition of this average SPT is what I call uh, disordered average SPT. There is a uh, similar but actually physically different notion uh, that we can call it decohered uh, average SPT. 
Uh, it's because whenever you have a mixed ensemble of states, you can think about notion of average versus exact symmetry. So another situation where we naturally have a mixed ensemble is in open system. Right? If you have a, um, a general uh, uh, quantum uh, mixed state, uh, and there the exact symmetry is basically the statement that you take your unitary symmetry operator, you hit from the left of the density matrix, you just get a single eigenvalue. That's just saying any state in your ensemble uh, is an eigenstate of K with the same eigenvalue. And uh, on the other hand, average symmetry doesn't do that. Instead, it conjugates your density matrix and leave it invariant. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the literature of open systems, these are also called weak, uh, uh, strong and weak symmetries. Uh, the different, the import, one important difference there is that the, the, re the most re physically reasonable kind of deformation you want to think about are symmetric finite depth quantum channels. So you can think, you can define average SPT as the uh, equivalence cost under such uh, symmetric finite depth channels. So physically, it's, it's a very different setting from disordered uh, average SPT. In fact, the classification will be different and consequences will be slightly different, but many of the mathematical structures are actually in parallel. So a lot of the things that I'll uh, talk about the re for the rest of the talk actually do apply there. All right, so now back to uh, uh, disordered case. Um, so the, 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 the most robust universal way to think about a non-trivial uh, SPT state uh, is to actually think about the topological uh, response. So this is something that makes sense even for interacting and disordered systems. Uh, so uh, roughly, Basically, the notion of topological response in SPT is the simple statement that if I put in some symmetry flux, it traps some symmetry charge. That, that, it, it's as, as simple as that. And um, uh, so symmetry flux usually is you put in by, by, by turning on some background gauge field. The simplest example uh, that everybody is familiar with is uh, the integer quantum Hall effect, where if you put in a U1 flux, let's say you're putting a unit flux of uh, the EM field, uh, it traps uh, uh, some integer amount of charge, and that integer is exactly your whole conductance. Uh, so the key uh, observation here uh, is that for average symmetry, the notion of charge is not well defined, because each of my uh, state in my ensemble is not even an eigenstate, so you don't, you don't have eigenvalue and you don't have charge, uh, but flux can be well defined. Um, so the example is uh, you take, you know, uh, you take some icing, let's say you take an icing model, with, but you turn on a random uh, magnetic field that breaks this uh, icing symmetry. Uh, well, you cannot talk about the total icing charge. It's not an eigenstate anymore. Um, but nothing stops you from imposing periodic versus anti-periodic boundary condition uh, for your icing scalar. Let, let, let me use the continuum language here. This phi is a, is a, is a real scalar that change the sign under the Ising symmetry. Um, even with a random field turned on, nothing stops me from imposing an uh, anti-periodic boundary condition. The only slight modification I need to do is that my random field should also be drawn from an ensemble with anti-periodic boundary condition. But that, that, that's a, that's a uh, tiny modification that we're used to in the usual Hamiltonian formulation anyway. So, uh, and, and, and that's all you need, really. Right. So, 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 so once you ha once you have that, you realize that you can define the notion of average topological response by the statement that if I have some average flux, then well, it cannot trap average charge because that's not well defined. But you can tra trap exact symmetry charges. So if you have both exact and average symmetries, uh, you're in good shape. Um, and more generally, it doesn't have to be literally just a charge. A charge is a zero-dimensional object. You can you can more generally trap some uh, some topological states uh, in lower dimensions. Okay. So that sounds a bit uh, dry. Uh, there is a physically equivalent but more pictorial way to think about all this uh, is to think about domain walls. Right? So the statement that my, 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 my ensemble uh, is symmetric under this average symmetry is pretty much equivalent to the statement that uh, if I look at uh, my typical states, uh, I do get a proliferation of domain work. Uh, for example, you can think of each domains as some uh, locally time reversal breaking domains, and uh, some you have say, this domain pointing up, point, the other domain pointing down, and so on. Um, and the statement that you have 
the average uh, time uh, reversal symmetry or Z2 symmetry means that uh, if you go to a large enough scale, you, you will have uh, the, the different domains and uh, the, the domain walls will be here. Um, and the uh, twisting boundary condition or symmetry flux, what the symmetry flux does is basically forcing in some domain walls. So, so, so it's equivalent to think about the domain walls or, or, or more generally symmetry defects. And the, 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 the precise statement here is that I can think about a Q dimensional uh, defects of some of my average symmetry. So Q is smaller than D, D being the space dimension. And then I can decorate on this, uh, 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 sorry, this should be Q. I can decorate on this uh, uh, defects with a Q dimensional SPT or more general invertible uh, topological states. Let's just do SPT uh, with the exact symmetry. And the funny thing is, uh, the, the, the interesting thing is when the, that, when the domain wall has dimension greater or equal to one, they can terminate on the boundary. Uh, for example, in, in this drawing, you can, you, you can think of uh, putting in some, some one dimensional uh, topological state, for example, Hodding chain or SSH chain, whatever your favorite one, uh, on this domain wall. And when the domain wall terminates on the boundary, uh, then you get the, the boundary mode of whatever you decorate inside the domain wall. For example, if you decorate holding chain, you get a dangling spin one half here. Okay, so that's the source of your non-trivial boundary state. So let me uh, uh, briefly compare the, 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 the picture of decorating domain walls in three different settings. So the, 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 the notion of decorating domain walls has been a pretty mature uh, business in the study of uh, SPT phases. So I can think about the usual internal symmetry SPT, for example, TI. And there the idea is uh, I, can, I can think in terms of domain walls, but for a symmetric state, what happens is that my actual ground state is a superposition of many, many different types of uh, domain wall configurations. In fact, it's pretty much the superposition of all different kinds of, kind of uh, domain wall configurations. Uh, the uh, equivalent, you can say that domain wall condense, uh, 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 condenses. Uh, for crystalline SPT, uh, actually you can think in a very similar way. Uh, so, so, so again, you put, you put non-trivial lower dimensional uh, stuff, uh, like holding chains or uh, things like that, uh, on lower dimensional uh, objects, for example, your unit cells or uh, 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 invariant subspace, things like well, your rotational axis, reflection plane, and so on. And your lattice itself is, can be viewed as a defect network. You know, your lattice is made out, uh, made out of those uh, crystalline symmetry defects. And for average SPT, it's, it's very similar. Again, you have a probability ensemble of different domain wall configurations, and then you can put stuff on your domain walls. So in that sense, the, the pictures are very, very similar to each other. So here are some examples uh, in case uh, the previous discussion, discussion was uh, um, not so concrete. Uh, so now we can, we can, we can take, uh, you know, pick your favorite e example. Let's say we do a 3D TI, the fouquet Malay type, uh, with U1 and time reversal symmetry. But now you introduce some uh, random field to break time reversal down to only an average symmetry. Well, the, the, the 3D TI can be understood as uh, decorating two-dimensional time reversal domain walls. So I have a 3D bulk, I, I can make time reversal breaking domains, and then on the domain wall, on the 2D domain wall, I can decorate with uh, integer quantum Hall state. That gives me 3D TI. And uh, as I said previously, as long as the, 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 the domain wall being decorated is higher than or equal to one dimension, I consider this state, I should consider this state non-trivial. So that checks the 3D TI with average time reversal is non-trivial. Uh, same with uh, 3D weak TI. The 3D weak TI, you can think of it as stacking of layers of two-dimensional uh, K-Malay TI. And um, uh, if you break the translation symmetry down to only average, uh, uh, to, to be true only on average, then, well, you're still decorating some two-dimensional uh, uh, defect. So that's, that still remains non-trivial. Uh, that's not always true, it turns out. For example, if you look at the 2D TI, the K-Malay uh, U1 and time reversal, uh, invariant state, and if you break time reversal down to only true on average, you turn on some random magnetic field. Um, well, in terms of decoration pattern, that's actually a zero-dimensional decoration. It's very roughly speaking, it's 
you have time reversal domain walls, but, but when two domain walls intersect, you put a charge there. Well, zero D decoration is no longer considered non-trivial, so what you end up getting uh, is a uh, trivial average uh, topological state. And I should say, each of this uh, statement is actually known before, because uh, there are free fermion uh, problems, and uh, they're, 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 they're uh, powerful tools to, to think about this kind of problem. But each of them was done in, in some pretty sophisticated work, uh, but once you understand the, the more general structure, each of this statement is really just a one-liner. And we don't have to confine ourselves to free fermion states. Uh, you can think about, you know, for example, it, let's think about a bosonic SPT. Well, bosonic, bosonic SPT are, by construction, all strongly interacting. Let's take the simplest one in 2D, uh, say, take the Z2 symmetry, uh, so, so essentially icing spins in two dimension. There's one non-trivial uh, boson SPT with the Z2 symmetry in, in 2D known as the leaven goo state. And the non-triviality of that state lies entirely uh, in the superposition phase factor of this uh, domain wall condensate. But now we're dealing with a classical ensemble of, uh, of domain walls, so phase factor no longer mean anything uh, in, the, in the ensemble. And for that reason, uh, the 2D boson SPT state with uh, only a Z2 average symmetry uh, is trivial. Okay. So essentially, I can, I can keep playing this game. You give me your favorite SPT, and then you tell me which symmetry you want to break down to only true on average. It's not too hard to figure out whether it remains true or not, uh, remains uh, trivial or not. Um, so, uh, also, let me quickly say that uh, the, uh, the non-trivial bulk also leads to non-trivial boundary. In the free fermion case, people uh, understood that essentially the, you, you realize that your boundary fermions def, uh, refuse to localize; they, they keep, they stay delocalized, uh, even with the disorder. Um, but for the interacting system. I'm not going to show you the argument, but the, the, the result that we were able to get in some reasonably controlled fashion is the following statement, that uh, if I have now an open uh, uh, boundary, uh, if I have a boundary, then the statement is that uh, the boundary state will almost certainly be long range entangled in the following sense. If I try to, uh, if I, for, any fixed, uh, for any fixed finite, let's say C naught, then the probability, right, I mean, these are random ensembles, so if I randomly draw a state, the probability for the boundary correlation length uh, to be larger than C0 uh, goes to one as the system uh, size approaches infinity. So in the thermodynamic limit, you are definitely going to get some uh, 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 infinite uh, range correlation. Right? Um, uh, the, the, other, the other equivalent way to, to put it is that for any finite size system, you can always, nothing stops you from finding some weird disorder realization that makes your boundary state boring, trivial, but that must come with uh, extremely low probability. Okay, so, uh, all right, so let me skip this. It works for LSM, uh, but let me, okay. Uh, in case you are, ma uh, you, you are math enthusiast, there's some, some formal math you can do to do the classification, but let me also skip that. Uh, the, the example I really do want to get to is that uh, it, I, I, I've, I've told you that you can give me your favorite SPT and can tell you whether it remains non-trivial with average symmetry or not. Uh, but the, the, the even more amusing thing, uh, more entertaining thing, is that uh, there are states that only make sense for disorder system with average symmetry. So in clean system, they just don't make any sense. Um, so the, this is one uh, particularly amusing example. So take. Think about three plus one dimensional fermions with this symmetry. So uh, Z4 average times Z2 average, and then the fermion parity. So it's, it's like a superconductor, but with some Z4 cross Z2 symmetry, uh, but uh, that's only true on average. Okay. And you can, you can make a state that can be think of, uh, you can, you, it, it's a, the domain wall decoration pattern is that uh, in three dimension, the Z4 and Z2 domain walls are two dimensional planes, and when they intersect each, uh, intersect each other, you can decorate a key type chain on, the, on their intersection. It's a one dimensional intersection. Uh, this domain wall decoration pattern turns out is illegal for the standard clean SPT state. If you, the reason that it's illegal is that when you try to condense or form quantum superposition of different domain wall configurations, uh, there will be no way to consistently assign phase factors to a wave function. Um, 
And if you really try uh, to, to force that condensate, you either break the symmetry or you make your system gapless. Uh, but as, as I said, now for, for the disorder system, the domain wall configuration forms some classical pr probabilistic uh, proliferation. So you don't need to worry about the very phase factor. So, so it's perfectly legal. It's legal and it's topological in every, se in, in every sense I mentioned, but it has no clean limit. As I said, if you try to force, if you try to reduce your disorder level and recover the exact Z2, Z4 cross Z2 symmetry, then you're guaranteed to be either become gapless or symmetry breaking. And it's even more funny if you look at the surface property. Um, the surface is, uh, uh, with probability one, is guaranteed to be uh, either gapless or topologically ordered. Uh, there, there are some arguments saying that if you have topologically ordered gap surface, it has to be non-abelian. Um, so 10 years ago, uh, some of us in the community uh, have made similar statement for even the usual uh, topological insulator surface. If you crank up your interaction and gap out the Dirac fermions, you get some non-abelian topological order. The problem there was that if you just pick your favorite simple Hamiltonian, uh, the, for example, Hubbard interaction or something, uh, the more likely scenario is that if your interaction is strong enough, you probably just end up breaking your symmetry uh, spontaneously. You get a superconductor or a magnet or something. Um, but the nice thing is uh, now you, we're in two dimension and in two dimension, the emery ma theorem guarantees us, us that uh, this average symmetries uh, cannot spontaneously bro break. Right. So, uh, so, so, so spontaneous symmetry breaking is not an option anymore. So you are, e you are guaranteed to be either gapless or topologically ordered, basically. Um, and the even more amusing thing is that this, this surface state cannot be viewed as any clean 2D system plus disorder, um, because, uh, you know, because if you push to the clean limit, the bulk become gapless. So if you really push to the clean limit, it's this, this uh, surface state is the surface of some gapless bulk. It, it, it's not like um, similar to some uh, boundary CFT kind of thing. All right, so that's the weirdest example we've, uh, we've, we've cooked up. And uh, that's more or less my story. So here's a quick summary. Topological phases make sense for average symmetries. Uh, you can think in terms of topological response and decorated domain wall. Those are still robust. Uh, they are intrinsically disordered average SPT states that, uh, um, that only exist in those strong disorder system. Um, the, the boundaries is still anomalous and long range entangled. Um, and there are much more to explore, really. So um, as I said, you can also explore this in open systems. It's even less explored than the dis disorder case. Um, uh, the story I've told it doesn't really matter if it's free fermion or strongly interacting, uh, but as we know, at least for the clean case, things often do simplify quite a bit for free fermions. It becomes much easier to calculate topological invariance and so on. I don't know if that's true here. Uh, um, whether we can make uh, some more observable uh, predictions for the boundary states, like average anomalies, and uh, probably the one. This one is uh, closest to my heart. It's probably the hardest one, also. Uh, that whether we can uh, leverage our understanding of this average anomaly to think about strongly disordered and strongly interacting uh, gapless states. Um, uh, there are many of those, and uh, they're, they're, they're really hard. And uh, um, yeah, and with that, just uh, let me just stop here and take questions. I can hear you. Okay, thanks for the great talk. So uh, at the end, you mentioned about the surface state of the uh, intrinsic SPT state, right? So you say it must be either gapless or topological. So if it's topological, like, what will be the uh, signatures to detect this topological surface state? Because apparently this will be a, like, disorder averaged topologically ordered state. Oh, no, the, 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 the simplest one is uh, every, every state has that topological order. Right. Yeah. So, so every state has, you know, each different states are adiabatically, adiabatically connected, and they, they they just have the same topological order. It's just like fractional quantum Hall. Right. But on average, like, oh, but like you're talking about when in experiments, just measuring just each disorder realization, it will be a. I mean, okay, experiment 
typically you only have one shot, one one sample, but you know, large enough, this thing should. Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, this is a similar question. So, um, for this for this particular intrinsically gap intrinsically disordered SPD, you said in the clean limit you could expect either gaplessness or symmetry breaking. But so it sounds like in the bulk you're also you're somehow excluding topological order as well. Is that right? Is oh, for, for 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 this one uh, for this one in the clean limit in the bulk actually we don't uh, you can definitely be symmetry breaking. We don't know if there are other options. In lower dimension, there are examples where the bulk just become gapless. But for this one, we don't know the, exactly what the bulk dynamics will, will, will do if you push to the clean limit. Uh, we know it cannot remain short engine tangle, but that's it. So then is this like an example where if you demand a unique ground state or something, then you must be gapless? Yeah. Like, OK, yeah. that's cool. Thank you. Hi, uh, thanks for the nice talk. Uh, I have two questions. So first of all, uh, is fermionic SPT here also considered? This one is uh, fermion. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, but I guess the, the examples that you showed are either for fermion or bosonic SPTs so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, 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 the systematic formulation, uh, you, can, you, can do, you can do everything. Fermions will be technically more complicated, but it, it's because um, over the past decade, people have learned how to do all kinds of crazy SPDs uh, for the clean case. And a lot of those math can just carry over. Um, uh -huh. OK, yeah. And also, I guess that the examples that, that you showed are, are only involves product of groups. One is the average, and the other ones. Yeah, uh, you, can, you, can, you can do non-trivial extension. You just have to work harder with spectral sequence. All right, OK, thank you. Yeah, this one actually can be realized with free fermion. <laughs> yeah. No, the 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 fermion will transform non. Uh, so 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 you have to turn on some 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 disorder field that transforms non-trivial, and then they couple to the fermion in some way. Um, uh, yeah. The, the 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 thing is, you have both U1. Yeah, if you do that, what you what will happen is you have both U1 charge one fermion and charge zero fermion, and and then you know the charge one fermion gives you the vortex and charge zero fermion gives you the key type chain. And, yeah. Is it possible to have like a disorder chain transition between a intrinsically disordered SPT and uh, a non-intrinsically disordered average SPT or a regular SPT? We're, we're we're thinking about that. We 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 don't. We haven't had an example that we fully understand yet, yeah. but we're thinking about that. Yeah. Is there like a Lima type criteria when that's, those types of transitions are allowed? Yeah, I think that Lima will say that those transitions will be continuous, but otherwise, I don't know what to. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, so this is almost asking a question, but um, so can you write down an explicit free fermion model? Uh, for 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 this one, they are solvable, at least in the bulk. Free fermion-ish model, yeah. So <laughs> it it is a free fermion model. The 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 and the the thing is, it's it's pretty much just commuting uh, locally. So you don't even have to go to momentum space or anything. You just solve it. Um, the 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 thing is, uh, it doesn't necessarily simplify anything. Because uh, if you if you go to the surface the, within free fermion, it's going to be gapless. You're just going to get delocalized fermions. If you want to get more interesting stuff, you crank up interaction, and then it's it's uh, the old problem all over again. Yeah. Yeah. What's the motivation for decorating domain wall? Yeah. Oh, um, well, it's a uh, physically, it's really the pictorial version of the notion of topological response. Right? Um, that that, but topological response, as we know, is kind of the most robust way to understand 
those topological phase. Right? If you have, if I crank up in, interaction and disorder, I may no longer know what I mean by churning so uh, churn number in my in my band, but whole conductance is always well defined. Right? So and uh, it, this is really the pictorial version of that. Yes. I think uh, the, the, the most big thing about uh, the correlation length of the disorder. So if I imagine during that correlation length that I have many, many domain walls in unit, in, in some unit length of the system. And yeah, small domain walls don't matter. The, 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 the statement is that as long as my correlation, uh, my, my disorder are short ranged and I, my state is symmetric, uh, I will have domain walls in arbitrarily large length scale. That's almost the definition of it being symmetric. Uh, it's slightly larger length, so it looks like there are no domain walls. The statement is it doesn't matter how large you look, large length scale you look at, you will always have to worry about the domain walls. That you know that that that's the requirement for being a symmetric state. Right? So and whenever you have domain walls, you're putting in stuff. So that's Okay. Sure. Oh yeah. If you yeah. No, no. If you if you merge your two domain walls and then they they disappear, that part of the topology will will be gone, right? But the the point is you can't do it everywhere. Will, you know, you, if you just look at some local region, yeah, you can always find a, uh, a, a, a state in your ensemble that here nothing looks nothing happening, you just have a single domain. But the statement is uh, if you look at large enough length scale, that can't happen everywhere. If that happens, it, by definition, you're breaking your average so symmetry. Sorry, what do you mean by clustering here? Oh, that, yeah, that, that's a that's a dynamical question, right? Uh, so, so, so the the statement is that uh, you look at large enough uh, region, you always find some domain walls. That's the that, that's a that's a that's a requirement similar to being requiring my ground state doesn't spontaneously break the symmetry. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can, you can. Is it? It's just uh, discrete things are easier to draw, but otherwise I have to draw vortices. But, yeah. yeah, you can you can have vortex and put this stuff there. So, yeah. Can I ask a quick question and then I close? Okay. So the more follow up on what John Moon is asking in the case where the top is the double of the three order. Yeah. Um, you know, in the in clean system, the top is double of the three order start enriched by the protecting symmetry. Yes. And that's what makes it more symmetric. Yes. Right. Same here. So, yeah. What does it mean to be enriched by the average symmetry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually have a whole story about symmetry enriched top average symmetry enriched topological order. It's just too complicated to. I mean, the 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 the, the thing is, uh, many of the notions we talk about for SET, some of them still make sense for average symmetry. Some of them no longer do. And uh, uh, for 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 this example. Um, the example we have, there are certain symmetry fractionization that still makes sense, but turns out to be illegal for, for the usual SET. It's illegal in the sense that in the usual SET story, that kind of symmetry behavior will have some the so-called two group obstruction, this H upper three obstruction. Um, so you're not allowed to have a legal symmetry fractionization pattern, but be, being the an average symmetry may, uh, allows you to avoid that. Yeah. It,
yeah, yeah, that's that's why that's why I make the requirement that uh, I want my disorder potential to stay short range correlated, so I don't need to worry about that kind of thing. But in principle, you can, and yeah, it's 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 richer physics. Yeah. Oh yeah, you you can you can you can do that. I think I think I think what Hart is asking is is more like you you stay with this rule, but you tune you tune you know you tune these conditions violently enough that uh, that 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 the state becomes long range entangled and what happens there. Um, but of course, you can also violate this rule and and then see what happens. Yeah. Do you know the non-abelian topological order for the state you put up? You actually know the solution. Um, what is yeah, it that's the thing. Um, I think I used to know, but last week I started to worry about it. Some aspect of this, I'm not entirely sure. I understand it 100%. Uh, I, can, I can tell you what I think I used to understand. It, it's just the icing with the illegal symmetry fractionization. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a symmetry fractionization that the fermion in the icing topological order uh, transforms projectively under Z4 cross Z2. So Z4, Z2, anti-commute. That's some illegal thing for the usual icing, but uh, this case seems to be allowed. So not only it's illegal, it's impossible to realize on the surface of an experiment. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. right. Right, so I'm slightly confused because uh, it sounds like being average symmetry is important, that you average over different like disorder realizations, but now when you're talking about uh, uh, experimentally that, oh, you're gonna see a topological order surface that you talk about for specific like sample disorder realization, you're gonna see a topological order state. So yeah. I found some yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 tension that's why, between these two explanations. That, that, that's, why, that's, why, that's why this statement, uh, I have to put it into this uh, seemingly wordy form. Right? It's a statement that uh, even if I just take one state out of my ensemble, which is what the experimentalists do, uh, the probability for that state to be infinitely correlated, infinite range correlated is one. Yeah, so, so in practice, you don't need to worry about it. Yeah, unless you're in really bad luck, but right, exponentially bad luck. But, yeah. Right, on that note, I can just thank Tom.